thank you guys for tuning in to hi i'm jake thank you for tuning in to music with jake and today i have the fucking one and only jimmy trigger oh, from wow. a trigger within dude i've known you for i remember the first time i fucking saw you was at warp tour oh back wow. in fucking 2017 or 18 you were with your ex at your ex now um you guys were watching william control oh yeah, yeah. Will, I, I still talk to william he's great Dude, I fucking love Will Control, man. I fucking love that guy. The the bullshit he went through was just fuckered. No, no comments. <laughs> hey, man, you know, I, straight up, my I shit's through, unfiltered went, and raw. But yeah, I went through some bullshit myself also. No comments. So. Hey, I I dig it. So you're a cat dude, I hear. I hear oh, yeah, you like kitty cats. Yeah, they're around here somewhere wrestling. So they're uh, here somewhere. I have one that's like 20 fucking pounds. That's mine. That's yeah. And then I have the like eight pound one that is a ball of fucking energy who acts like a dog. Yeah. Where are you from? Are you, are you Boston or something? Uh, I've moved around a lot. Actually, I, I've I'm like a melting pot of different accents. It's weird. I get made fun of for the way I say sausage. And oh, yeah. sausage, so, sausage and dog. So. Yep, and dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I lived in the south side of Chicago for a little okay. bit, so I mean that might make a little bit of sense, yeah. I guess. The best French fries I've had so far in America were somewhere in this like shitty part of Chicago. So uh, <laughs> that's the only reason I want to go back. <laughs> hey man, that's probably one of the only reasons to go back. Well, that and I, I like the White Sox. I like baseball. So okay, yeah. uh, no clue. I've been to like seven or eight baseball games. I have no idea what's going on every time. So, <laughs> well, you're from Ireland. So do you watch football? I mean, like, no, are, do you I, have a favorite I, club? No, I, the only sport I watch is fighting, and that's it. Like everything else is lame. I can't. I just the Super Bowl. Uh, wait, no, that's football, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. I just like, oh, I was uh, talking about soccer, as in. Football. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, I grew up. I was a Man United fan growing up. Like, so yeah, right? see, that's that's what I meant by football. Like I I, I wasn't taught about Amer American football. Yeah, 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 was boring. Nineties yeah. <laughs> Premiership soccer, Man United. Okay. It's the best. Yeah. Oh man. So like young Beckham. Yeah, I'm old, yeah. dude. So I'm like 82 years old. So <laughs> fuck. Nah, you're not that much older than me, man. You you've only got like maybe 11 years on me. If that. Oh my god, that's fine. <laughs> what are you? What, how old are you? I'm 31, man. Oh, okay. Oh wow. You even think I'm older than that? Well, okay. No. No. no yeah. I, I feel old. Trust me. I'm. Uh, I'm well, uh, you I'm, live in you, you live in LA, bro. That shit ages you fast. And the music yeah. scene out there is brutal. Yeah, it's, it depends on who you're around, I guess. Like, so I, I don't tend to hang around this music scene. So uh, I'm more, I tend to hang around with my cats and myself more than anything. So um, I'm not very much caught up in the LA music scene. I'm just, I guess I'm part of it, but I'm not in it as such. So I've uh, I've uh, a low temperament for horse shittery or fuckery or whatever you want. Am I allowed to swear? Sorry, because I will. Oh, dude, unedited, unfiltered, say whatever the fuck you want to say, man. I had a dude smoking a blunt on here the other day, so I don't uh, care. <laughs> I, I don't smoke weed, but uh, I can pretend to, so there you go. Hey, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, you know? Caffeine and nicotine, that's about it. Well, I live off caffeine, so I feel that one. I, I, I love my Death Wish coffee, and I love my soda pop. So There you go. Hopefully, you get a sponsor from it or something. So. Oh, maybe. I mean, it is what it is, man. Honestly, I, I'm i just living life one day at a time, man, playing playing music and avoiding bullshittery as you do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I believe that was that like a Vin Diesel quote from uh, <laughs> Fast and the Furious. I, I, I know family is um, from that. I'm living life one quarter mile at a time. So yeah, it's sad. Well, I mean, you kind of do. You have a you have a badass looking bike, man. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, what I do as well. I just, again, it's everything I do is, um, it's very introverted, I guess, or whatever. Like all my hobbies are very introverted and can be done by myself for myself. So like, I build bikes and I write and I sit in my studio and I sit on my balcony and i have plants and i just uh i just i'm i'm a regular joe kind of boring and just sit there and ponder about life and stuff uh it doesn't require a lot of human interaction so uh one could say i'm a very boring individual but uh, i'm very entertained all day every day so and, uh, Man, anyone, i was gonna say anyone who has cats is constantly entertained there's yes, no doubt about that and humans are overrated 
human yeah. interaction is definitely overrated. It's, uh, they're, they're a required taste, let's put it that way. So. I've dealt with a lot of assholes in my lifetime growing up. So, Well, you, yeah. you learn as you get older, you, you don't actually have to deal with them at all if you just leave them to it. So uh, <laughs> I don't I don't deal with them at all. It's great. It's actually pretty easy. So it's, uh, I was going to say, unfortunately, my chosen profession, I deal with them all. <laughs> not, not a big fan of musicians, so uh, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I it's the egos that really fucking kill me yeah. like that's that's really what it is it's all the egos and sometimes i'll run into someone who doesn't have an ego um and most of the time i do it's why i don't usually interview the artist i like to interview the techs you know yeah, the oh, yeah. people behind the scenes because those people are the ones who are down to earth and just like hey man i'm just happy to fucking be here i'm just happy to have a job yeah, well, like, funnily enough the uh, tour you mentioned that uh either you saw or met me on it was like seven weeks long and i rarely ever hung out with any of the bands on the tour i was always with the roadies and techs because i was working mostly with roadies and techs on that tour as well but uh i just uh, nothing against everyone I, I i i just i don't i just don't have i guess what in common with the the musician you guys or whatever or maybe i just i feel like i'm 82 or whatever but the i like I work a blue collar job every day anyway myself. I'm, I, I like working with my hands all the time. And I, w I woke up every morning and uh, for the first week or two, I remember the uh, all the roadies and stuff thought I was one of the, the musician guys. So they'd try and bully me out of, like, go away kind of thing. I wouldn't leave. And then after a week or two, they were like, fuck, this guy isn't leaving. Like, and uh, for the whole summer, then I just hung out with those guys. I just became one of those guys. And I left the band guys to be the band guys and go do whatever the fuck you want. I just hung out with those guys. I just I like them better. They're just more fun. Like so and then we just spent the entire summer just berating fucking all the bands on the tour. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, I'm not I'm not from here, so I didn't know most of the warp tour, I didn't grow up with it. So I didn't know ninety-five percent of the bands even on it. I had no clue. I, I watched stick your guns and hate breed every single day and then everyone else i had no idea who they were so that was it hey man good taste I'll, I'll be honest i didn't i didn't particularly like any of the other bands <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, just, which doesn't do me any favors amongst musicians either because uh i'm like i just yeah like you're a nice person i just don't like your band so Hey man, that's completely that's completely fair. You know, I mean, it's the equivalent of telling a girl uh, when she asks, "Is my ass look fat in this dress?" I'm like, "Yes, your ass looks fat in that dress." Like, but I'm telling you the truth. So why are you getting mad at me? So just look. It that, is what it is. That's key, though. You know, you are one who tells the truth when a lot of people nowadays just like to lie to everybody. You know, it's it's just society in general. Everyone's fucking walking on eggshells all the time, and yeah. I. I don't agree with it. You're obviously not from America, you know, which lucky you. <laughs> no, 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 I love this country. It's, the, it's honestly the best. I'm just very happy I wasn't uh, born and raised here. Mm. Uh, or no, that's not true. Um, my my best friends are all all in LA or all like from the East Coast and Buffalo and Chicago and stuff. So they're all just more kind of a little more rough around the edges as well and where i was born um so I, I i was just a little bit more rough around the edges so coming over here it's, it was just easy it was just like like youtube comments like that doesn't fucking affect me like get out of here <laughs> just like a guy, a, a guy trying to stab me kind of affects me but like like saying that i suck or whatever online i'm like okay i tell myself that every morning what are you talking about like so I just fuck out of here so it's not so, so uh, but i love this place i love i fucking love la i i just um yeah it's not it's not i don't i i just i, I love la not for it's not has nothing to do with the people i just love the place it's beautiful it's got so much going on for it it's like surrounded by culture and it's got so many different types of people here i grew up with one type of person white with one type of religion catholic and i knew nothing else until i was a teenager like so i never saw a black person till i was like a teenager i never knew about other religions like so because it was taught in our schools to be we we're catholics and that's it like so we're right they're wrong like so 
and now here I'm surrounded by just multicultural, multi-race, multi-religious, multi. It's awesome. I love it. So it's a melting pot. I love it. So anyone, the Joe Rogans of the world, and all like, oh, he's a fucking shithole. Well, you're one. You're a billionaire. Shut the fuck up. So. You don't know what you're talking about. He's never actually lived in LA for stars. He lived in Woodland Hills. So fuck really? off. Yeah, he lived in Calabasas. Go fuck yourself. He lives like next. <laughs> so like, yeah. something new. Yeah, no. Like, no. And like, the ho- he's like, oh, fucking homeless crisis. I'm like, it, there's always been a homeless crisis. What are you talking about? There's 20 million people in this county. Put 20 million people anywhere, there's going to be a problem. What are you talking about? Put 20 million people in Chicago. Let me know how it works out for you. They just. <laughs> This is the silliness of the internet and like fucking information that isn't true and just silliness like that. Los Angeles is beautiful. There's way too many people here, but that's the price you pay. Like, so just like, oh, there's too much traffic. Well, that's, I, I my joke about traffic in LA. Well, that's the price of admission. So you want to go five miles, it's going to take you fucking two hours. So just like, uh, that's the price of admission. So I highly recommend coming to LA. Just avoid all the weirdos. <laughs> so, <laughs> isn't that easier said than done, though? I mean, yeah. I have lots of friends who live in LA. Um, I'm supposed to drop by and visit my buddy uh, David. He uh, he's a producer there who worked with Papa Roach and stuff way back during the Infest days. He he recorded oh, the Infest yeah, yeah. album. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know, every yeah. every kid knows the Infest album. You know, oh, yeah. cut my yeah. life into pieces the best yeah. but uh, yeah point being is uh if i'm to stick on the don't lie don't be bullshitting people just tell it how it is i i will stick to that like so what you hear on the internet everything about los angeles i am an advocate i've been here 12 years now i'm never leaving i'm dying here so it's it's one of the greatest places in the entire world i know people are looking at this role in their fucking eyes but guess what you don't live here and you don't know what you're fucking talking about <laughs> Honestly, go, go milk- man. Yeah, go milk a cow or something like that. <laughs> hey man, I I have no judgment here, like whatsoever. Yeah. As I said, I lived in Chicago, you know, so I, I'm used to big city life and everything. Now I live in the middle of fucking Michigan, where it's always fucking cold. Can't oh yeah, stand no, it. I couldn't do that. Like, so yeah, well, it's, like but that's the thing. Like in Black like, Alley, I'm looking out my window. The mountains are right there. Dude. I go riding every weekend in the mountains. The oceans that way, the cities that way. I just don't go near it. That's all. Like it's it's it's. You can live anywhere. You can live in a desert if you want, to, uh, or you can live in a fucking forest. It's it's who you surround yourself with. It's not the place that's the problem. It's the people you surround yourself. With. So, and uh, hilariously enough, just going back to when you the two thousand seventeen work. Back then was when I was surrounded by awful fucking human beings, and I was really, I'm really happy to be away from all of that now, and that's, that's why I'm, I am the way I am now, a lot a happier a person, and just uh, better off for it, and it's easier to be more honest as well. Like, and a liar doesn't have to remember, so therefore, if I just tell the truth all the time, it's just like, I don't have to remember what the fuck did I tell this guy last time, so I can, yeah, dude, your band is really good, be caught, and I fuck off. <laughs> nah, I don't like it. <laughs> Don't be a cunt. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, I I, I 100% agree with that. Um, That brings to mind because I I watch a lot of fighting. Um, I grew up boxing. Um, And so, fucking the Paul brothers, man. I can't stand the. I I, Okay, I don't like that they're going after like people who aren't usually boxers. I do like the Tyson fight that's coming up. I tight, really yeah. hope. I, I don't. I, I don't follow. I, oh that, man! Follow yeah. yeah, yeah. The the Paul. I can't remember which Paul it is, but the one who boxes called out Tyson, and they agreed to a fight. So yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited to see how that one goes because I grew up watching Iron Mike. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, and so I I'm that's just a, curious. Well, that's um, a that's a debt wish for sure. So uh, that's not going to go well. But yeah, I, I, that's but that's like uh, <laughs> that's like. Uh, like kind of like um it's fast food fighting i guess like it's not it's not that's not the good stuff like it's not competitive it's not real like so it's just no, uh, it's exhibition it's just for money yeah it's silliness like so um what uh that's why I like ufc ufc bellator yeah it's the best like it's just it's just i i like it because it's just I, it's the ultimate introvert sport as well like so it's just uh i i'm always a like I grew up, uh, this is a weird one. I grew up golfing when I was a kid. I was a junior golf champion. 
another introverted sport. So, like I'd practice by myself, I'd go play by myself. And then I go, I grew up really poor. And then I go to the rich kid golf courses and I whoop all their asses. Like so on um they did not like it. Cause I'd wear I'd have like shaggy long hair and a tie-dye metallica top and I I just go in there with my shitty mismatched golf clubs and just whoop all their asses and then go home and probably cry about something or whatever. Like but uh I always like the introverted sports, like so it's just uh and I'll still watch golf. I love golf. But um yeah, fighting's the same. It's just but it's this it's just uh it's the ultimate like animalistic fucking sport like it's a man or woman like it doesn't matter it's like it's just you it's all you by yourself and it's uh i think people that have any kind of struggle in life can relate to someone like locked in a fucking cage <laughs> fending for themselves like so it's but then once you get and once you get past the whole like oh it's just violence it's not others like i i did like multiple different uh disciplines in my 20s when my body actually worked and once you know it's actually like just techniques and fun and like it's kind of like oh wow look what they're doing it becomes a lot more fun just like the reason i don't like football i have no idea what the fuck's going on so watching nfl or something i'm like <laughs> why are they stopping every four seconds this is crazy why is a 40 minute game five hours long this makes no sense just like but i don't want to understand it i have my sport that i love and it takes up most of my time i guess <laughs> that's fair yeah. golfing that's um my grandfather he's, he's um, <laughs> my great grandfather was from ireland actually oh, yeah. and he was also a golf champion when he moved here to oh, yeah. america so you know it's it's funny that you say that because i walk around my my great grandparents house and there'd be golf trophies everywhere and shit so it's i i golfed in high school a little bit i was absolutely fucking terrible yeah, but yeah. It, it it is relaxing i mean yeah, because yeah. you don't have to worry about anyone else but yourself yeah. you are alone with your own thoughts and it's relaxing yeah, really my, it, it'll, my guitar it player you. just took it up so he's always <clears throat> posting videos on instagram and i'm constantly commenting back don't move your right shoulder stiffen your arm uh, your leg is swaying too much like so i'm like i'm like oh i'm such an asshole <laughs> just fun you're being guess, honest though yeah I mean, you know yeah but he's just laughing he goes yeah i know it's like okay cool. <laughs> but it's just, like I, I it's i know i know i know a little i know i know a lot about a little and that's about it like so so the things i do know something about i i like i like to tell people and then, uh, but i know uh yeah I, I don't know a lot about a lot as well <laughs> so. no that's that is that is completely fair i mean that is that is fair are there any golf courses around you like any good ones oh, yeah, yeah. yeah i i, I just i am um, i started playing before the pandemic again and i just go to this little white trash one uh because it, re it's really expensive um i just to do it just for fun and then the pandemic happened and i stopped again but uh, i just like I, li I like going to the driving range and just like fucking whacking balls <laughs> It's that, a great, that could go for one of two ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that's my other extracurricular hobby. <laughs> hey, man, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's yeah. a perfectly natural thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know what? It, it's the people who don't understand golf that make fun of golf. Yes, absolutely. It's just... Yeah. I think so. We, we, you've just lost all your listeners, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, I really don't care. I, I've told everyone from the get go, I made this because I want to do it. I did this because I enjoy it. You know, oh, yeah. I, I don't really care if you watch it or not. If you do, thank you. If you don't, it is what it is, man. I like talking with interesting people, you know, and yeah. your story was, was interesting. I've read some of your past interviews and shit. Oh, shit. And, uh, Tell me what you read because I don't know if any of it's um, true. <laughs> your, your life was hard growing up. You got your ass oh. beat a lot. You were the introvert, the weird kid. Um, mm -hmm. You moved here because you wanted to escape that. You started a little metal band when you were there because you were filled with rage and anger and wanted to take your frustrations out. And you just happened to be fucking good at it. So yeah, 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 yeah. then you came over here because you were made an offer. And so you, you know, came over here and started to do the metal thing here too. And you're still pretty fucking good at it so yeah. you know no it's it's the the typical angry metal kid story then i guess <laughs> yeah no, but not the americans couldn't handle the fucking ass whoopings that the irish give i'm sorry dude yeah, but y'all y'all yeah. y'all are brutal yeah well no that's what was i i was talking to someone like i think it was yesterday and it was just funny like um 
Well, my my joke is like I oh it was my it was uh, my my relations were coming over to visit and we were talking about their kids and stuff. Uh, uh, I I made a decision a few years ago to have a vasectomy. If, you, if anyone knows what that is, because I don't want children. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've, ne I've never wanted children because my joke is like I only know how to raise children like you would raise children in the eighties in Ireland, <laughs> and that's illegal nowadays. So, uh, uh, it's the truth, yeah. But it's 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 funny, but it's not. But it's it's just there, there's like parts of it that I'm like, I still kind of agree with. I'm like, oh, I'm like, and I've I'm not. I don't want to sound like the old eighty two year old man, but there's a couple of fucking. I'm not even talking about young kids. I'm talking 20, 30 year olds that could use a fucking clip around the fucking ear. Oh, <laughs> for is. sure. But it's like what you, uh, the the wise philosopher Iron Mike Tyson once said: uh, "Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face." Well, a lot of people are walking around that's never got punched in the face, and uh, I think you'd rethink your opinions in your life if you um, knew what violence was. And um, it's not that you not not that you should beat your kids or anything like that, but you should. I think people grow up unaware of the dangers that they're actually really in in everyday life, and you walk around oblivious and you type things on the internet and you say things thinking there's going to be no repercussions, but uh, you have to go out into the real world. And in the real world, there's this thing called violence and it will get you yeah. if, if it comes for you. So it's just, uh, and, and unfortunately I just experienced it at a young age. And um, when it wasn't a fair matchup, that's, there's nothing fun about a, a fully grown man, a soccer kicking a, a small child around the house. So, um, uh, that wasn't fair. I'm going to say that wasn't a fair. <laughs> that, that, no. that, let's put it in UFC terms. That was John Jones beating up a flyweight right there. So, <laughs> but yeah. um, but at the same time, now who I am as a person, I wouldn't change it because uh, I I just I'm I like I like who I am. I'm I'm very aware of my surroundings and the people I like to be around, and I'm, I I can read people very well and just be like, oh, you're. You, you don't understand the world and what the danger you're living in or the people you're around or like uh my friend owns a bar and it's just funny like talking again people in hollywood hollywood's that way like again he own, my friend owns a bar it's the only reason i go there and we watch fights there and we eat the delicious pizza there the elbow room on kawanga in hollywood if anyone wants to go there for pizza it's the best um and uh, just watching people being so oblivious to where they are and how they're speaking to people. And I'm big on manners and being polite to people because I think it's very important. I don't care who you are, what size you are. Like, I just eight foot tall or four foot tall or like 400 pounds or 100 pounds. Like, so I, I don't care. You should be polite and you should use manners at all times. But listening to people the way they speak to people. And uh, I remember one time this guy was just talking and I remember leaning into him and I went, uh you know you're not safe right and he just looked at me like kind of like a deer in headlights and what he goes you're not safe just so you're clear just with the way you're talking you're not safe here and then he just fucked off and i was like because you people need to i there's no need to touch anybody it was like you need to wake people up sometimes as well like you you can't be you can't talk to people the way you do online in real life because there are consequences like so and then when people complain about oh there was an act of violence towards me it's probably because you were a cunt that's why so and you're not fucking paying attention or you lack the so social communication in real life and blah 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 so just uh but uh again as i said unfortunately i learned all that at a very young age and it, it uh went through my teenage life at school and uh it just it, look it it was a rough time and all like that but uh, hilariously enough i found a, a metallica cassette one time and i listened to it and i was like holy shit this is cool so uh and then <laughs> i thought i was going to be a drummer and uh, i realized i couldn't drum so uh <laughs> and I, was like, I was a catholic school choir boy so i was like going, oh i guess i could just do that but make it more angry so i'm um, i got my mother to write a letter to get me out of choir because i didn't like singing religious songs and then i just started uh little bands and stuff like that and on it went from there and fucking 30 something years later i'm still <laughs> singing angry <laughs> songs so but uh, in a much better mental headspace let's put it that way like so um, well yeah. that's a plus you know yeah. that that is a plus 
um i i grew up in the system um the america's uh juvenile judicial system so yeah. you know violence was an everyday thing for me um ass whoopings were very common yeah, yeah. uh respect was definitely beaten into me um you know because a, a lot of the kids you're with are very troubled youths um some of some are there for murder some are there for almost getting murdered you know like yeah. you that you have to kind of you know respect everyone's walk of life because you don't really know what the fuck they've been through yeah and so it's it's interesting to see the young people, you know, younger people, you know, like 20 is young to me now. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, so the young people walk around trying to talk a whole bunch of bullshit thinking that they're strong and you know when they fucking get smacked down they're like ah! yeah. and they cry about it. Well, you fucking deserved it. Yeah, you're you're a, you're essentially you're a child until you're not. So um 20 mm -hmm. years old you're still a child i don't care like you can be still a child at 30 as well like but if you've no life experience and no wisdom you're still a child so just uh if you don't know how to hold yourself accountable and hold yourself if you walk around every day and you're a victim and you uh you're always the one that's uh it's poor little old me and you're not socially aware and emotionally mature enough you're still a child like you can be 40 and you can still be a fucking child like so uh, because now we live in a world where online caters to your little echo chamber or circle of emotions and opinions and stuff that are all nonsense and bullshit. So um, where I don't like to live in that world, like all my friends in real life, we have disagreements and arguments all the time because they're real. Uh, we don't always agree with each other and we hold each other accountable all the time. And that's what that's what the real world is. So. Um, and when you can take criticism and handle that's why i was saying earlier i've been in good god 20 or 30 bands i got i have no idea so much stuff and i don't i don't like purposely go read comments but every now I, i'll like find a, a band i was in 10 years ago and i'll find a video oh my oh cool i'll go listen to this i'm like oh there's fucking 58 comments let's see and i'll just burst out laughing it's really funny I, 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 most of the time it's always like oh cool i never heard of them or something nice and then like this guy sucks or i'm like going i'm like jesus christ like this is hilarious like that anyone would even go to like make the time to say something it's just like it's it blows my fucking mind because like, you would never ever say it in real life it's just bananas like so it just it's fucking never once have i gone to the whiskey in LA and saw a band and thought, ah, oh, these aren't good. I'm going to go up to them afterwards and go tell them how bad they are. <laughs> just like it's, fucking, it just would never fucking happen. It's just, it's really funny. Like, but um, look, it's the world we live in, and uh, I'm just not interested. So it's all good. I I, I feel that I noticed the Batman tattoo. So you're a fan of Batman, oh. hey? Yeah. Oh yeah. My whole house is uh oh not in this room, but uh, my whole house is Batman stuff. It's just a uh, so have you read the heavy metal or the dark knights of heavy metal batman comic no, no. Um, okay so i'm a nerd yeah, um yeah. but i thought this was one of the coolest fucking batman yeah, cool. ever oh i have the well i have two oh, this one is, i've got like collectible ones and like weird gadgets yes i have I also, like 20 different hot wheel batmobiles here and just i i just it's my house is a museum at this stage like they're everywhere they're just fucking yeah i'm a but that, that's the when people like now i'm in a in a position where i am a grown up i would like to consider myself an adult gross it's awful <laughs> um, but also uh as i said earlier like i grew up pretty poor and um i still wanted to like uh reclaim a lost youth kind of thing like so and i mm -hmm. realized and um, because i have a, a nice close-knit group of friends and stuff like that we all realize like we're all in our 30s 40s 50s my my circle but we're all like fully grown men but we never forgot like what we like loved growing up and stuff so we all have like one of my best friends um collects snoopy stuff and stuff like that like, you know like snoopy the dog and i'm the batman guy and one of my friends collects like he's this like very well off businessman but he collects baseball cards and like dumb shit like i'm like I'm like you, it's important not to lose that as well like so you maintain like some form of like childhood innocence or something like mm -hmm. that and when i like see this stuff or 
I managed to get a little piece of treasure in like a, a Goodwill or to, like I go to the supermarket and they have like Hot Wheels for a dollar. I'm like, ooh, I get excited. Like it's it's nice. Like it, it makes you feel good. Like so, and I I I don't like when people like, oh, I, I've grown up. I've grown out of that. I'm like, you should never grow out of that. Like you should always no. maintain some form of like childhood innocence that is brings you joy. Like so, like and. Uh, it's stupid. You don't have to just, just growing up doesn't mean you have to get rid of stuff. Like so, you know, just being a. I'm an adult now. I must get rid of all my comic books. Are you insane? Like so. By the way, they're graphic novels. Uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> mine, are on, <laughs> mine are on display in my living room on a, on a nice shelf with a light. Um, they, they, these are like. Uh, I'm a big like mental health advocate. I have been for like fucking fifteen years. Um, I've dealt, uh, I don't like, I never say I suffer with depression at all. I, I just live with depression and I, I never got diagnosed until I moved to America because your, um, health system, believe it or not, is better than Ireland's. So, um, and, uh, I, I just, uh, over the years of getting better and better and like finding silly little things that bring you joy. Like if you can spend a dollar on something that reminds you of your childhood and, brings puts a smile on your face fucking spend a dollar who gives a shit like never never let go of that kind of stuff like so um and that goes to the, like the 15 year old that might be listening to it or the 55 year old that might be listening to it like, so unless it's pokemon pokemon are stupid don't do fucking fuck pokemon. <laughs> that's that's actually hilarious um i i find that a lot of people who have suffered through trauma as children um retain a sense of innocence as they grow older and they search out these things that brought them a sliver of sunshine in their darkest times as kids. It's why I collect, you know, like my awesome looking, you know, Batman who laughs yeah. figures and really cool. shit. right. Isn't this yeah. fucking cool as shit? Great. Yeah, I like that. And uh, you know, I, I collect stuff like that and spawn and, and all that because it it's the it just Whenever I'm feeling down, I can just look at it and be like, you know, that's fucking cool. You know, yeah. like Batman, Batman had it hard too, you know, and I could like relate <laughs> to that, you know? Dude, I'm a huge Batman fan. Like yeah. straight up, I love Batman and I love Todd McFarlane. I call yeah, him the yeah. Todd father. I just have this as well. It's uh, it's two things. It's the, it's one of, I think it's the Stan Lee. I, I bought two so I could have one on my desk and one in the box. And then someone bought me the guitar, but it plays music. It's. Oh, that is so fucking cool. Real guitar. But yeah, these that are like is cool. These are collectibles and all that stuff. But um yeah, the same thing. Like if every night when I go to bed, like I I my 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 living room is like a museum, it just has cabinets full of stuff. I just walk around and look at it all and it makes me smile and it's just funny. Like it's just like it's just it's nice. Like it's like kind of like and again, I, I didn't have it when I was growing up and I'm growing up now, but I actually think I appreciate it more now. Like it's just I have more toys now than I ever did as a kid, and hilariously enough, they're all in boxes still. And it's just it's uh yeah, no, it's important. Like maintain that. Like it's uh, oh, and it's the 85th anniversary of Batman as well. I think yeah, this year. I don't know what month. Yes. It is, but yeah, it's just um yeah. I, I just I, I don't know what it was with Batman. I think it was because he wasn't a superhero essentially. He was just like a guy. So yep. And I was just yes. just a dude, dude. Well, his superpower is he's a billionaire. <laughs> so. I mean, that's so is uh, Oliver Queen. You know, Who, who's Green Arrow. Green, Green Arrow. Oh yeah, yeah, I never got into Green Arrow. Just like uh, he was too much of like a playboy for me. You know, he was too flamboyant. You know, like and that that shit kind of annoyed me. Batman, his shit was made out of strife. Yeah, you know? he, was, he, he wasn't was just. He was the goth guy as well. So uh, it, yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, he's like the original goth superhero. Like yeah, yeah, he yeah. is the dark superhero, and yeah, I yeah. love it. He's almost an anti-hero in some aspects. You know. Yeah. yeah no. The best thing about I remember, uh, like. He's like he's not a superhero. I'm like whatever, dude. Like he he's so smart. He has a way. He he's like he doesn't trust anybody, which is great because like I'm kind of like I don't mean that in like a negative way. It's just I don't. I always have my guard up with people. So but he even though he's like a part of like the League Legion Le, Le, League of Legends or whatever like that, mm -hmm. he has a way of taking down everyone in the League of Legends. Like he has a secret way of like he has the Superman Kryptonite way, he has the way to take down Wonder Woman. He has a way so, so if anything ever goes wrong, he has a weapon against everyone in it. 
which is amazing. <laughs> and I love that. So it's like oh, you yeah, have man. that top secret information that I'm like, hey, bitch, I'm going to post this about you if you fucking ever fucking fuck me over. I'm like, oh, God, okay, never mind. So I love it. I think he's just, he's way smarter than everyone else as well. Like, so I would not, I can't compare myself because I don't think I'm that smart. But, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> and I, it's I, I don't, cool. yeah, he's just, he's cool as fuck. I just, uh, I, I love it. I love it. And uh, hilariously enough, when I'm um, rarely, I don't, not a lot of, I, I don't, uh, like my, my best friends will come over to my house. I'm, fr I'm a very private person, like, but, um, it was fun. I'm, I, I ride motorcycles as, as you saw online and, um, we had a meetup and they the meetup was like near my home and a few guys arrived early and I was like, would you guys like coffee? Come on up. And they, these, uh, three or four fully grown men and all, we're all biker gear walk into my house the next thing is just three or four biker guys walking around my house like it's a museum going whoa cool. <laughs> it was just like oh okay this is why I, I do this this is like nice it's like just like the guard is completely down it's like tough guy biker guy i'm like whoa dude this toy is so sick i'm like going i was like yeah i know it's cool like it's just it's and that's what i like it's a it's it it, it gives innocence and it gives like a conversation and then it gets them to talk about, well, oh, I remember Power Rangers. I'm like, oh, yeah, my brother loved Power Rangers, I guess. Like, no, I just like, uh, it, was, it was good. Like, so, yeah, I was very sad when Tommy died, like, a few years ago. You know, it, actually, uh -huh. it sucked. But uh, I don't know what his real name was. But um, it just. Uh, uh, Jason David Frank. Jason it. David Frank. That was his name, yeah. yeah and... it, 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 they're nice things uh, to reiterate what I was saying. Like, you shouldn't especially if you are a person of um any kind of like uh depressive disposition or anxiety or something it's especially useful to have things like this in your life to like kind of bring you to a nice place or bring you to a better place and just it, it gives you joy like i don't know like what's wrong with that like so it, it doesn't again it doesn't matter if you're 15 or 55 it's just like I'll because I do it every day. Like I sit here, I got all my Batmobile. I got one the other day. I just it was, I I always buy two. I say one for play and one for display. So I got one for play and then the other is for display. So it's just a little white. That one. is. Oh, that is cool. It's a I dog. like the purple. I like the yeah. purple with it. The white and purple yeah. that that yeah, I works got, well. Like, I got tons of them, but it's just but it's. I'm buying my groceries. I'm doing my adult thing. Oh shit! There's a Batmobile. Okay, cool. Uh, as, uh, people will be like, "Is that for your kid?" I'm like, "Yeah." That's for my kid. <laughs> just... Inside me. Yeah, Inside yeah, exactly. me. <laughs> exactly. yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that, man. That I I I grew up that that was my escape when I was locked up, you know, in the institutions yeah. and whatnot was was comic books, you know. So I read comic books and graphic novels because believe it or not, they are two different things. Yes. People people give me shit about it, but they are two totally different things. And I grew up reading the Batman. I grew up reading the Incredible Hulk and the Superman, which I am not a big fan of Superman. I think he's a Mary Sue. <laughs> Fucking sue me. But that's just me, you know? And then I found, um, as an adult, I found the Dark Knight's um, death metal, which was really cool because it, it's, you know, the whole alternate universes and everything. And that's where the Batman who laughs came from because it's Batman who got infected with the Joker virus. Cool, yeah. I've seen so it's... That. It, yeah, and they made like a whole album of, with it, man. Ozzy was on that fucking album. Like, dude. How did I not know this? Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. Definitely look for it. It's badass. But like, I, I like, I'm drawn to the darker things because it brings me joy. I know that that seems kind of counterintuitive to super, some people. Super goth, bro. Whatever. <laughs> what? I mean, you see the fucking flags in the background? Yeah. Like, come on, you know, it, e it is what it is. Emo chicks are crying now, right now. They're just like, oh my God, I love him. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, no. Please, 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 no. Please, no. <laughs> I, I grew out of that phase in like 2006, okay? When My Chemical Romance was big and everyone was into <laughs> that shit, I was listening to Arch Enemy and Demu Boy here. So, there, you there, know. again, there's like going back to bands that I just. I didn't grow up with therefore i just don't understand against the war to my chemical aroma i just don't i never got any of it i just so that that's the hilarious part of living in america just here who got like pan i was gonna say pandora what are they called? oh pa paramore yeah they got paramore, paramore. Last paramore. Year. I was like, yeah I, I know the twilight song that's pretty good i guess i'm just like uh, fuck, i don't care what it is 
Uh, it's just like, they're the best band in the world. And then I try to listen to it. And I'm like, this is not good, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, uh, but I, you can't, you can't argue with nostalgia. So just like, if, again, if it brings you happiness and all that, go ahead. It, but don't, it's not good. Don't tell me it's good. <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's where it's all up to, you know, everyone has their own opinion as to good music. You know, there's music I tend to listen to, you know, that, I get made fun of sometimes. Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I listen to, like Backstreet Boys and boy bands sometimes. I, I love boy bands. Backstreet Boys are the best boy band in the world. Like so. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I when I'm uh, when I'm on my motorcycle, uh, I've uh, one of my bikes has like these giant speakers, and just to piss everyone off, all the biker guys around me, I'll blast Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys and all these, and I know every <laughs> single word of every single song because I grew up at that time and. Uh, they just look at me shaking their head and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's what? Like they're good fucking song. I just, I don't, there, there isn't a genre of music I wouldn't try and listen to. Like um, there isn't a genre of music that I've never not liked. Like just like I've liked every type. And that was always like Ireland was very much uh death metal, very, very metal, metal, metal. And I was always the guy that liked singing and big choruses and stuff, and that never mm -hmm. went well. And like you, 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 like you, out, you outgrow your cage, I guess. And that was why I left Ireland as well. Like I, the, and over here, America loves choruses, and uh, I love choruses. Yeah. And because, because it was accepted over here, now it became more accepted that oh, he went over there. And, they liked it. Okay, now we like it over here. Uh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I love a good hook, man. I love a good hook. And I think that's what that's that's what really I think got me with Backstreet Boys is their hooks. They were they were just yeah. key. You know, well, I, the, I love that shit. Yeah, the silly the silly misconception from metal people or people that just listen to metal, like that music's easy. I'm like pop music. I'm like if it was easy, everyone would do it. What are you talking about? It is so incredibly hard to write a fucking pop hook it's next to fucking impossible to get right like so you just it's not gonna and i will say it and i don't care you can fucking maybe this will get your fucking headlines it's easy to write a death metal song i don't give a fuck whatever <laughs> do i can have one thing minutes. get the fuck out of here now is it going to be good or is it going to be of something of substance maybe not but like and Arthur, like, like I, I couldn't write a Dying Fetus death metal song. They're fucking awesome. But, like, I could write a generic death metal song in 20 minutes. What are you talking about? Get out of here. Like, so write a, a, a banger pop song in 20 minutes? Not going to happen. Like, so it would take fucking a long time. And even then you'll miss. Like, it's just, like, sing. And there's the other thing I, I say a lot. Like, uh, my, again, everything I say is tongue-in-cheek kind of, like, so, but with metal, nowadays as well it's been cheapened with the the like as i sit in my studio with no real fucking instruments at all anymore I don't really, <laughs> like everything has been cheapened because you don't really need to learn how to play instruments anymore you just dial it in on the computer well now you don't need to fucking learn how to sing anymore well i just wasted 33 years of singing because I was just like fuck why the hell did i learn how to sing i could have just sang badly into my computer and then tuned <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's kind of like don't give me that shit if you're a metal person go metal is weird fuck off all the bands you listen to are all cheating they're all not playing their instruments right most of the bands you're listening to aren't even writing their fucking songs i can vouch for that on a certain level wink wink uh like so like they don't write a lick of any riffs. They don't write any of the fucking music. They don't write the fucking lyrics. They don't write the melodies. Around. They're just puppets. Like, that's it. And get out of here. Like, so, whereas I do everything, me and my friend Ricky or some of the guys in my band lend a fucking hand. We do every single note, everything. Like, so, and no one writes anything for me and nothing is auto tuned or anything on me. It's all done correctly as far as i'm concerned but that's very ignorant of me to say as well <laughs> i think that's why i like uh, a lot of local bands honestly like i i work with a lot of local bands in in michigan and whatnot and they all the small bands that no one really knows those are the ones that i really admire because those are the ones who don't have the financial backing to do really anything you know they they literally work you know like 12-hour jobs yeah. you know just and then 
right after that job, they go, they drive two hours to play a show, maybe get 25 bucks if that, you know, and they do it because they love it, you know, and back to the whole pop, pop song thing, dude, fucking writing a pop song you write is damn near impossible. Some of the best bassists I've ever learned of have only done like pop stuff. Yeah. Lee Sklar, for They're example, is one, yeah. one of the best bassists I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's so hard. Just I've been Tim, playing just in Timberlake's entire band. Go tell me they suck. Like just go, you're you're a moron. You're oh, just, I never. <laughs> yeah, no I idea never what you're talking about. Well, but the thing is as well, like I get it if you're like deep in a scene or you're just like that person that just wants to be the like on oh, the metal, but you're probably Elitist. not yeah, you're not yeah, you're elitist or you're probably not a musician either. So you don't like tend to look at things like I'll be honest. It's kind of I don't listen to a lot of music for that reason because uh, I've watched how the sausage has been made for too long. So it, I I tend to not listen to music anymore. I just when I'm listening to a song, I end up dissecting the fucking thing and I'm not enjoying the song and I'm just like, oh, I wonder how they did that. No, what's that sound? Like? I'm not listening to the actual song. I'm just like, oh, I wonder how they made this part. Mm -hmm. oh, I wonder what that is. Oh, ooh, ooh. like I'm just. So I'll be, I, I, again, I have people, what are you listening to lately? I'm like, I'm oh, nothing really at all ever actually. Cause I don't, it's, it's probably, I would imagine I spoke to a, again, I'm, I'm in LA. I'm not going to name drop. It doesn't matter. It was a big actor. I just happened to bump into him. We had a two hour conversation about writing and just talking about things. And, um, I said it's probably like you like you don't watch movies you probably look at them and like like said and he was like dude it's the same thing i can't i don't watch movies to watch them i watch them to dissect them and see how they are cut and written and produced i'm like and i'm like i don't i don't i love movies i love watching movies because i still have that like i still enjoy a movie for what it is uh no matter how good or stupid or dumb or crap or shit how was it I'm like it was a movie i don't care like it's awesome like, it's just I just enjoy it. Like, whereas if it's a song, it's just like I'm tearing it apart in my head, and I'm like, it's it's annoying. Like, it's just like ah, I just want to enjoy the fucking song. I tried to listen to uh, Spirit Box's album a few weeks ago, and like three songs in, I was just tearing the song apart. And I was going, God damn it! Like, this is neat. I just turned it off. I was like, I wasn't even listening to the actual songs. I was just like tearing it apart. It was just like, oh okay, no, this is this is crap. I I, I not the song wasn't crap. It's just I wasn't getting any joy out of it, so I just uh, that's that's fair. When I get musically overloaded, I tend to go and I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um yeah. just because you know that that's something that brings me joy because I can just lose myself in the book, you know, and things like that. Movies, um, I know some I just actually interviewed a guy who's like a short film director and everything who actually used to be around your your neck of the woods back in the day, did a lot of interviews for bands. Yeah. and stuff he's like and i just i got burnt out he's like i just kind of you know retired from it i got burnt out you know after like two thousand plus interviews of being around all these different people it just i was like you know dude that's honestly fair yeah you know that that's very fair you would get burnt out being in in the industry for so long and meeting so many people with inflated egos or you know now you start looking at everything because you've been doing it so long you're like well this is fucked up this is fucked up they could do better there that was in you know whatever you know, at that point, you're like, well, now I'm just, what's the point of even listening to it? Because I'm getting no enjoyment out of it. Instead, I'm just tearing yeah. it all apart. So it's. I also don't like speaking or listening to people that are disingenuous about like, well, the meaning of what I'm trying to display with this song is, but I'm like, shut the fuck up. It's a song. Just let us enjoy it. Like, for Christ's sake, like, it's, it's music. It's Don't up worry. to our interpretation. It's yeah. up to everyone else's interpretation. It, it, but it was like the, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers the show Miami Inc. or like LA Inc. and all these tattoo shows. And like, what's the meaning of your tattoo? Well, it reminds me of my dog who I like, but but it's a dolphin jumping over. I'm like, oh, it makes no sense. I'm like, maybe it doesn't have to. Also, maybe it's none of your fucking business. Like, just like maybe, or maybe it's just a song. And maybe just enjoy it or don't like they're your options like mm -hmm. like it's not it, you don't 
I, I feel again I live in a very dramatic town so I'm surrounded by very dramatic people so everyone is selling something whether it's a movie or a song well man this this is really about my emotions about oh guess what no one fucking cares dude like this is about my traumas this is fucking is the song good like I don't care like, after if the song isn't good your traumas can fucking jump out the window for all I care <laughs> let me just do the song first okay if it's good I'll come back and maybe I'll ask you just let me enjoy it it's a fucking song dude and that i've always felt that way even with what i'm doing if you don't like it cool there'll be another one and maybe you won't like that one either but i don't really care like and I, again i half jokingly say you know what maybe sometimes i don't fucking like my own songs either like so or sometimes i do like it, it all it all depends on the mood but don't it's like essentially yes it's art but art is somewhat subjective i will not say it is completely subjective because it's not some art is absolute trash and it just is but or shit. Shit. yeah it, it, yeah no it is yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a fucking song dude like relax I, I'm, I'm a new song coming out in the next month or so i'm like it's a song it's a pretty cool one it's going to be cool there's a cool video um it's about stuff that was important to me when i wrote it or maybe it wasn't important at all uh maybe you'll like it or maybe you won't i don't care because i'm going to write another one after that as well and another one and another one it just it doesn't matter like it's just it's i yeah i don't yeah just fuck off like, with your fragile ego bullshit like just it's silly like, just no hey, man, yeah. if, if they want to be salty dogs let them be salty dogs I mean, I love salt, so it's on my food. That's all it is. Though, but... <laughs> it, it takes me back to flogging Molly. Actually, I, I I totally stole that from y'all. By the way, I I love flogging Molly. I grew up with flogging Molly, um, and song salty dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If people want to be salty. Are they, be salty. Are, are they uh, are they one of the bands that pretend they're Irish? Is that one of them bands? I think so. Actually. Okay. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, I, I found out about them from Tony Hawk Pro Skater back in the day. And when oh. I was a skater punk, you know, so I grew up, I was listening to like Rancid and you know, I was oh, listening to Less cool. Than Jake. I, oh, I love Rancid. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Rancid is fucking epic. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, I, kn I know one of their techs who used to tech for Slayer too. So like, you know, that's always cool to, to see how small things are, yeah. you know. Um, it's always kind of nice to see that where... It, I've discovered that everybody kind of knows everybody, and it's not always for the best reasons that they know each other. But yeah, yeah, well, that, that's why I can keep my mouth shut as well. Like, just like I don't need to talk about like uh, anybody. I, I just don't bother talking about anybody because everyone's involved in in everybody's business in some way, especially where I live. So it's just it's uh, especially it's, where you live. <laughs> I, again, it's it's silly to it's just silly to talk shit. like it's just it doesn't make sense like it's not going to benefit you like either like so also it's, it shows weakness of character as well like just to talk shit about other people Steven. it does it's a kitty no? by the way to anyone who doesn't know i love kitty cats he's not interested <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyway sorry i don't even we're just rambling there go on. oh no that's that's Pretty much all I really wanted to do was just kind of pick your brain and just kind of, you know, see what you're about, man. Like, I, <laughs> I'm i more interested in the person that I'm speaking to, you know? I don't want this to be some fucking pre-written questions and bullshit like that. Yeah. Because everyone does that. You know, the interviews are like, what's your favorite song? Or what was the meaning of, you know, as you said, what's yeah. the meaning of your tattoo? I'm yeah. not going to fucking ask that. Yeah. I'm not gonna. That's why I haven't asked about your tattoos. The only one I pointed out was fucking Batman because I fucking yeah. love Batman. That, that's very important, still as well. So just, that that is very important. Batman is very important. I yeah. love Batman. Your screen yeah. has frozen. Has ha, or my, has it uh, frozen on your side? No, no. You're moving around just fine. Mm. I see myself moving. Oh, also. Uh, oh, hey. Oh, look at my ugly ass. Hey, there's my Ibanez. But. but. Fuck it. Rut row. Did I lose you? <sighs> oh, shit. Um. Well, fuck me. I guess I'm going to have to edit this. Oh. 
Okay. Um, well, shit. Let's see if I can find a link. Mm-hmm. Not trying to do that. Um, fuck me. Son of a bitch. There we go. Weird. Hey, right, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Full on no. crash. You are all good, man. Not tripping. It actually gave me time to think about what kind of base you have sitting over there in your corner. <laughs> oh, no, that, that is a really shitty telecaster so ah yeah i was i was fucking around with my ibanez back here my workshop yeah. my baby yeah i have a the best base i own <clears throat> is a an 80 dollar harley benton germany shitty base it's the best base ever it was 80 dollars so. hey man honestly though however you make it sound you know it's it's and however you feel with it is is all up to you, man. It's all in the eye of the beholder or the hands of the yeah, basic. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, that's the also the best thing about LA is uh, there are a million studios here and a million people selling a million things. So it's just I I'm constantly buying equipment and stuff all the time for like super cheap. So I just uh, it's it's again another awesome part of living in Los Angeles. So it's just. I mean, I I cannot hate on that. I where I live, I I live in like middle of bumfuck nowhere. Like I'm like an hour and a half from like any real musical area. Um, you know, I'm like three hours from Detroit, and you know, which I mean, it's fucking Detroit. You know, it's yeah. it's Detroit Rock City. You know, but uh, I don't think I've been there. That's one of the cities that I've not been. It's. I just want to see. I I I have watched documentaries on Detroit. That's good. There you go. It's true. I've actually driven through Detroit. Yeah, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's about but it. Uh, as as we were saying, like I I'm not here to ask a million and one fucking stupid questions that every fucking interviewer asks, just because I think it takes away the, from the authenticity of of the individual in which I'm speaking with. I'd rather you be you, and not try and put on some fucking facade. That shit pisses me off to no end. And well, I, I tell everyone that I'd like to talk about like the songs I'm writing right now and just like how oh, my important they are. To the world. <laughs> Don't be a cunt. Don't be a cunt. Please. No, it's like, oh. Great. Now it did it to me. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you. yeah just, no. as, as I said, uh, if you want to go on any of the YouTube videos and just call me a cunt or say this guy is shit or whatever, <laughs> go ahead. I just, uh, if anything, it boosts my algorithm. So that's pretty cool. I suppose. Hey, yeah. I mean, definitely this this video is not for children. If you're a kid, get the fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go fuck yourself, you stupid kid. Um, yeah, no. It, Oh, again, it's just, it's, um, yeah, I, I suppose I should, I'll drop my plug there. If, if you do want to see stuff, yeah, go and just, I don't, I don't have a lot of, uh, I'm not very active on social. I post pictures of my cats as he's lying on the floor and just hobbies and stuff and hummingbirds. I, I love my hummingbirds. 
Um, like, I don't have a TikTok because I refuse to, even though I've been told I have to have one. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Uh, nope. But uh, uh, at Jimmy Trigger, me and at a Trigger within, there's all the band stuff, mostly Instagram, because I actually enjoy Instagram. And I use Facebook, but it's for all my hobbies. So, like, I, and that's the other thing about the internet is like, the internet's so toxic. I'm like, not mine. It's awesome. I curated it. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> so, my internet's fucking really good, actually. It's like, I'm on it every day and it's always fun, cool stuff I'm interested in. It's never any drama. It's just, it's uh, pretty cool, actually. So, um, but that's how my life is as well. So it's, uh, you just, you, you can curate these things to work for you. Like, you you don't, don't have, you don't have to add every fucking Tom, Dick and Harry who tries to add you on Facebook. No. And no. I'll be, I'll be honest, like most people, uh, I, you know what? Maybe you as well. I can check after this. Like, so like most people that if I do end up adding people on Facebook, I immediately unfollow them all. Cause I have my Facebook is just, um, it's just hobby pages, like not even mm -hmm. music. It's like, like I love like motorbikes and cigars and like meme pages and stuff. So I just don't want that all fucked up with people posting anything. Basically, I don't even care if it's good or bad. <laughs> so just uh, I'm like, no, no, this is for me. Like I don't care. Like so, this it's like I I, oh, uh, I feel that most of my shits memes and shit. I don't. My personal life is not on Facebook. I yeah, leave all my personal yeah. life off off that shit because no one needs to know my business. Yeah, the, my favorite thing now to do as well on Facebook is uh, almost every day if I can remember, it, I go to the memories thing, and it gives mm -hmm. you like what you posted a year, four year, five years, six years, twelve years ago, and I realized how fucking stupid I was, and I never delete them, and I love it. And I'm like going, you sir, are full blown retarded. Like so, just like <laughs> you are, just like you're a moron like so and i'm so happy to see it because it's show at least it shows me a little bit of growth in myself as well like the things that i, I would never post that now whether it be like again you said that we're not talking about politics or religion or anything like that but like, whether it was a political opinion or i would always go for some reason i always went after religious people why because i was angry at being forced to be raised catholic when i was younger but I was like, I would never do that now. That's so fucking stupid and juvenile. Like, so just... <laughs> oh, My, yeah. I, I, I can't really say shit about the whole religion thing. You're you're fun enough. I'm 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 gonna yeah, forego yeah. that, man. I I forego that today anyways because I didn't blur my fucking background. So yes, everyone knows. Yes. So uh, yeah, fucking so say it, what you want to say about me, but you know, I, it is what it I is. also like petting zoos and goats. That's very cute as well. <laughs> uh no yeah it's just it's silliness like but it's just it's important to it's a, it's a way to control the people dude yeah 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 well it's it, it look it's just a thing it's it's everyone has their thing and uh i was one of those angry stupid people as well once and um it's just nice to not be that anymore and just like live and let live in certain senses as well like so on i yeah. actually get i genuinely enjoy it it's usually in the evening when I'm done working, I'm like, oh, I should go check my memories and see what I posted 10 years ago. And it's usually something so just dumb and not well taught out and just a dumb opinion about something or just uh, what, what, oh, I, I, I like, uh, I always get shit still from my friend Steve. My cat is on the floor. He's at eight. Uh, prior to eight years ago, it was basically me bashing cats because I hate, I hated cats. And then, um, so everything was about fuck you, fuck your cat. I hate cats. Cats are shit. Now I've got two of them. I love them. <laughs> They're my best friend. Like, ah, fuck. So, but it's fun. Like, and, and to this day, people still remind me, like, hey, remember when you? I'm like, yep, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's that. yeah, I was, I'm an asshole. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. People Dude. change. But it's cats are assholes. <laughs> but if you if you are not changing, you're not evolving. If you're not evolving, you're not getting wiser and blah blah blah. So just it's uh. And I'll never delete it because it's just, it's funny. Like, it makes me laugh every time. I'm like, you, sir, are an absolute jackass. And so I just, I, I want to go back in time and absolutely fucking drop kick myself in the side of the <laughs> head and just be like, moron, and just walk away. Be like, what? What did I do? <laughs> uh, it shows yeah, no, growth of character, though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Know, it's pretty funny. Like, it's great. Like, so, but, um, oh, man. I look back at my memories and I, I just cringe. I'm like, oh, my God. I was such like a little cringe lord. What the fuck was wrong with me? Yeah, but, uh, it, all of that stuff is a, it's, it's something, it's an underlying, it's, it's, it's a, 
it's something else. It's a, it's an underlining problem. It's a, it's a insecurity. It's a something else that's going on in your life. Like there's, there's no reason that I should have ever went after people because of like a religious belief or tried to force a political opinion. Down. So even me talking about it is making me laugh. It's so funny. Like one, I can't vote <laughs> so in America. So why would I even have a political opinion about anything here? Even though I have them now, but I'm like, it's not, it doesn't matter. It's my opinion. And I don't know if it's right. That's the thing. Um, I don't think any of them are right, dude. I don't think, I don't, I don't think <laughs> I, I'm in uh, full agreement with you. I don't think anyone has this very well thought out. But uh, it's just funny to think that I was so egocentric at one time in my life that I was so dumb, because it's not confidence, that I would post this on the internet and think mm -hmm. that I'm right. Fuck you, people. I'm <laughs> going, Jesus, like, what a dick. <laughs> so, so, it's pretty funny. Like, it's great. Like, so it's, re it's really good. Like, I, I love it. I love it. That is one question I have. What what are the differences that you really notice between like here and where you're from? Oh, um, the the cliche one is um, and uh, most people, mostly Americans, that, that disagree with it because I guess they don't have a, a frame of reference. Like, so America is the land of opportunity. Uh, America, one hundred percent, is the land of opportunity end of story it is not a conversation this is one thing i will look back at in 10 years time and be like yep you're still fucking right because i am like i but this is something i've thought about for a long time and also i'm living proof of it like so um i have zero education i can barely fucking read like uh comic books i guess so uh, i i'm not at all academically intelligent in any way shape or form like so um I moved here with a, a red rucksack, which I still have in my closet, which I'll forever keep. Uh, and that's all I ever had. Um, and a decade later, uh, with just sh sheer perseverance and opportunity that this country has provided me, I own two businesses. I, own a, I don't own a lovely home. I have a lovely home. I'm, I can feed myself. I have a lovely place to live. I have cats. I have beautiful friends. I have family here now. I have opportunity falling out of my asshole. And so um, none of this would be like, I'm not rich at all. Like so, but I'm, I'm happily at least middle class of some sort, like, you know? So I, I think I'm middle class, at least somewhere middle class, maybe a little lower middle class, but it doesn't matter. Whereas uh, if I was still in Ireland, I would be either on welfare or I would have committed suicide a long time ago because there is, no opportunity like there is here so i'm just it's not gonna happen so i would have had to have left the country anyway so it's, it's just it's not it's not there and and i still get to do uh artistic things i still i'm surrounded by artistic people i'm influenced by artistic people why because they're all here and i'm not just talking about like music or anything like that like even with a in the last few years like i i got really big into like designing and building motorcycles well mm -hmm. some of the biggest and most influential motorcycle builders in southern california and one that i followed for 10 years i accidentally met and now we've become like the best of friends and now we're in business together so oh that's fucking cool congratulations that, yeah yeah but that doesn't happen and we'll be launching uh our our business next month i think is when we're doing it like, so um, and it's all like motorcycle parks and stuff like that that we're, we're designing. Like, that doesn't happen where I'm from. Like I grew up in a village on the side of a mountain, you know, in, in Ireland. That doesn't happen. And and as well as that, like in music and stuff, I'm I got to work with like some massive producers that I only grew up with. I've been in bands with rock stars that I grew up with posters of them on my wall. Why? Because they live right here. They're just like, and they know who I am now because I'm that guy. Like you know, it's just like. That doesn't happen where i'm from like that's just no like so yeah this this place is the land of opportunity is fair and like i'll be honest like i've missed a lot of opportunity because of being uh, again like depression and anxiety and stuff and not taking things but like that's i've the rest of my life to live as well like, and i'm looking forward to kind of grabbing more opportunities as well like so i'm I'm still really good at what I do, which is fucking weird to say, but I am like, I, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm really good at some things. And I'm, 
yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to like kind of just really take more on now in the next next few years and really go at it. And, um, but it's all right here. Like I, just, I couldn't do it anywhere else. So uh, I, I again, fucking people, if anyone is listening, rolling the rise, just like I'm sorry, but it, it, this place is the land of opportunity. It doesn't. And I, I guess maybe you have to be foreign or you have to come here from somewhere else or you have to have a frame of reference or something like that come from somewhere where there is zero opportunity there's none like i i, I reached uh i'm i don't mean to uh gloat or anything like that. i went home to ireland in december mm-hmm. and it was a big reunion for me and i played a huge show in, in a massive theater that i would never been allowed to even walk into when i was younger which is hilarious and um I received the mayor's award in my town for being me and all this stuff. And I'm like, holy fuck. But I had to leave to get all that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, if I had stayed there, I just would have never got it. So it's just, it's so funny. So, um, but I came here and I made something tiny of myself. Like it's not, and even though I like my success isn't huge at all, by no means, I still work my normal, I, I have my own business and I work my own job and I, kill myself working every day and uh, i i myself finance the entire band that i i uh, uh a trigger within is all financed by me and all the work mostly is done by me and i have an, an amazing band of guys with me like that do everything that i ask of them to do like um but i never put the burden on them to like pay for anything or because it's not it takes the fun out of it i want those guys to play enjoy the experience and enjoy the journey and just enjoy the shows and everything and i'll just take care of it i'm just used to taking on stress at this stage so um i'll just take care of it like, so i'll just work the extra 12 hours that day or whatever that i'll pay for it it's fine like, it's just um by the way you can help by donating a dollar to patreon.com forward slash jimmy trigger <laughs> <laughs> hey man plug it's it dude dollar. it's a dollar what what uh i I love your mentality, like like legit. Um, because you're right. Um, I think you do have to be a foreigner to to really understand. I think Americans are extremely entitled mm. here. Um, you know, because they have grown up in this land of opportunity, you know, where really everything is pretty much fucking handed to almost everybody at some point in their life. You know, and I've met people from other areas, you know that aren't from america and they've all said the same thing but they're lucky to fucking be here and you know what you brought up about like mental health and and all that yeah the 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 mental health landscape has definitely changed here um people have become a lot more accepting which is really fucking cool Mm -hmm. because you know we i grew up you know, being told that I had one thing or this thing where I was just being obstinate and I was being an asshat and, you know, come to find out, no, man, you have an actual, you know, problem. And I'm like, well, who the fuck, you know, like it's nice to know these things. Like if you're just walking around feeling broken all the time and not knowing what's wrong, that, that alone can drive you into despair. Like, so, um, yeah, again, um, I told this story a lot. Like I, from the age of thirteen to twenty-eight or nine, uh, when I started, I went to a, a a very angry Armenian lady doctor here. Uh, I was told I had asthma, so I was on inhalers from the age of thirteen to twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and I went to this angry Armenian lady doctor. She was awesome. That's my love language, anger. And she gave out <laughs> and she goes, you are chronically depressed and you're having panic attacks. You don't have fucking asthma. And I was going, huh? Uh, <laughs> but, that, but that's how bad the health system was where I was. They wouldn't even, even if they knew you were depressed or you were having panic, they just, oh, it's asthma. Here's an inhaler. And I'm like going, oh, okay. Why do I want to kill myself? <laughs> just like, so just, no, I mean, that's fair. You know, like that, that's a thing that has become recent. The the anxiety thing is still like a recent thing that's been showing up here in America. Hmm. You know, the 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 panic attacks and the the manic depression and all of that, because it used to just be blanket statements. It used to be just like you have bipolar. That's yeah. it. You just have bipolar. You know, it, it wouldn't be that you have like severe anxiety or or what have you and things like that or you're just 
being a teenager. You know, you're you're just depressed. You know, you, something you you don't like is going on. I was like, no, there's. I think there's a lot more to it than that. You know, why I can be watching or doing something that you know everyone else is laughing and smiling and having a great time. I'm like, I just want to fucking die, and yeah. I don't know why, yeah. but I do. You know? Yeah, so, knowing is uh, it's, it's it's fantastic to be honest. Like, when I found out and. Uh, I've been hardcore into my, uh, I just say my journey of this, I've been hardcore into it for four years now with like psychiatry and stuff. So I have a full-time psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Richard Ramirez. Wait, no, is that the fucking fugitive? The, yeah, yeah, that's his name. The night so, stalker. <laughs> yeah, 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 holy shit. Um, <laughs> and he's just this really nice Mexican doctor, so he's definitely not the night stalker. But um, and over the first year and a half, just figuring it all out and figuring out, like I'm on medication. I have no shame about that at all. I don't care. It's like, it's like it's kind of like breaking your arm and not going to the hospital to put it in a cast. It'll be fine. I'm like, your arm's broken, dumbass. Like you know, <laughs> just, what, are you going to walk around with it? No, you have to fix it. You fucking idiot. Like so, just. <laughs> So now, uh, I, I, four years into my journey of this, I'm still on medication. I probably will be on it for the rest of my life because of damage that has been done to my brain and mind over 30-something years and whatever. That's just maybe beyond repair. But I don't mind. I don't care. It's fine. Like, it's just, if my life is better simply by just taking, you just take a pill every day, I'm like, oh, and it just helps me, I'm like, I don't fucking you should take vitamins every day as well. Or sorry, vitamins. You should take vitamins every day as well. <laughs> like just the fuck is wrong with you? Like just like what are you talking about? You should drink water every day as well. What are you talking about? Like, you, there's things you need to do every day to feel good. Like so there's no shame in and I've I've spoken to a lot of people over the last few years, especially close friends that and I never tell anybody what to do with their life. It's not my business. Like I always tell people what I've done. And if you choose to do it, go ahead and do it. And they always give me the same thing. Like, oh, I don't want to take medication. I'm like, that's fine. And they always end up going to a psychiatrist. And then six months later, they're like, okay, I'm going to try medication. I'm like, hey, just do you, man. And a year by, a year goes by. This has happened to me five or six times with five or six different people. A year goes by. Oh, uh, I'm on medication. Uh, I think I'm actually feeling better. A year, a year and a half goes by. Holy fuck, I feel so much better now. Everything's better about my life. I've changed so many things. But the thing is, you made the choice. You made the decisions. I didn't say I all I said was what I did. And now you can say what you did, and maybe that can help somebody else and blah blah. blah. I'm not telling you, you Jacob, you need to go to a psychiatrist and you need to take <laughs> medication. And you the second anyone tells you you need to, you need to stop listening to those people because you don't need to do anything. They need to shut the fuck up is what they need to do. Like so, But if you see someone that is doing something that you think might be beneficial to you, there's no harm in asking, hey, what did you do? Just like if it's as simple as a music thing or a fucking gym thing or how, hey, how did you do that? Like So if they say what you need to do is eh, eh, that's not what I asked. What did you do? Maybe I can apply that to my life or maybe I won't. I don't know. So just, it's, uh, it's not, it's hindsight. It's not that hard, but making the decision is very hard to help yourself. And, um, as I, I used to say, I, I was very, very good at being depressed. Like I was really good at it. So I got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm okay here, but not realizing the whole world was falling apart around me. So it was just, uh. Yeah, it was awful. It was fucking awful. I'm never going back ever. <laughs> so I'll take two pills every day. I don't give a fuck. Like so, I'm never going back. So just uh, no. So to anyone dealing with that kind of shit, I just uh, if and when you're ready or you want to, like, reach out for pe professional help. My parents, not your friends. You need non-biased opinions in your life because your friends are going to be. Oh, it's just going to be okay. We'll have no good. That's not what we need here. Like so. Your parent, we love you or we don't want to hear it. no good you need a therapist you need a psychiatrist i just said it you need you might need you may want whatever you may decide but like professional help is is the only way to go and um that's how you will solve it just like again you fall out of a tree you break your arm you don't call your best friend what do i do like oh, <laughs> 
they're just like, no, your, your friend doesn't know what to do, so don't call your fucking friend. Like, so just like seek professional help. Like, and it's out there and it does work. So I agree with that 100%, man. Like, that's honestly the way you put that is probably the best way I think I've ever really heard it put because that's a sad. lot of people will rebel if you tell them to do something. It's in our nature. And a lot of people, we as humans fear that which we don't understand mm -hmm. or know. I think that's why a lot of people fear death and a lot of people fear facing their inner demons because they don't know what the outcome will be. And yeah. nobody can can answer that except for themselves. Yeah. Well, you should never, in any uh, facet of your life, you should never tell someone what to do. You should always give them a choice. Like, so that's the thing. You should never tell someone to leave. You should explain they have an option that there is a door, like kind of like, and you mm -hmm. can use it if you want like kind of like that because no one wants to be told especially if you're in a in an emotional state like no one wants to be told what to do like so just um and the best thing is if if a friend or someone does come to you in a state of depression or dire straits or they want to kill themselves by no means give them advice that's not a good way to just be there for them tell them you care about them and help them get professional help that's the way i because the, the the fucked up thing is that because i've spoken a lot about it or i've, I've said a lot online i have um what, what is it where i can see the message but i don't open it or whatever like i won't open them so the people can't see i'll have like suicide notes and shit from people i can't respond to that i'm sorry like i just it's not my job to do that mm -hmm. um i've had whether it's teenagers or adults send me notes just like i i really want to die right now i can't i can't open those like i can't respond to those i'm not a i'm not a professional or anything i'm a moron like, and i can't just because you heard something i said and oh, i relate to that and maybe you can help me i can't help you that's not what i do i'm an idiot the right songs that's it and maybe they're not even that good the songs whatever but just it, it's a, that's not my job like so um you need professional help like so and uh, anyone if you reach out to any influencers or any fucking rock star people and they start giving you advice block them immediately that is a, a toxic cycle fucking person that they are actually the ego in their fucking head is like oh yeah i'm gonna save get the fuck out of here they're morons get run as far away from those people as possible like, so test it Test it right now. Pretend you're depressed, and and, and just write a message on Instagram to fucking your favorite person. And if they start responding, yeah, man, I totally get you. Well, you should do it. Block. You're a fucking psycho. Get out of here. Like, that's a fucking crazy person. Like no. So the best I can do for you is either not read or not reply because you need to go get professional help. And that's just I can't. I can't be answering those messages. It's not my job. I respect that 150. percent Yeah, I. I I am behind you on that. And I don't blame you for not opening those because you're not their savior. Only they can really save themselves. You know, because they have they have to make the choice to go seek the help that they need and trying to go to someone who isn't trained and that may very well end up causing way more harm than good. You know, and and you know, they can be like, oh, this song spoke to me, so you understand me. N -n -n no. No, I don't. No, no, I don't. I don't know you from a hill of beans, dude. Yeah. yeah I, no, I, also, so I, the thing is, as I said earlier in our, our conversation, <laughs> is m most of these people don't even write their own fucking songs. So they're just, oh, singing, yeah, that, they're just singing words. That's all they're doing. Well, look how the industry suffered when the writers went on strike, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it as well. Like, so. Well, it's just, it's it's a joke. Like, so just, yeah, no, don't like, and, and even though I said, like, yes, I do write everything. About, and even though if you, if you listen to a song that I've written and you're like, man, I totally relate to this, I totally relate to you, that's nice. But I can't help you, though. That's not, no. that's not how this works. It's, it, but the best, if we are to talk about messages and songs, the best thing I can give you through a song is, you're not alone in what you're feeling and that's awesome that's the best thing i can give you i can't help you but no. the feeling is like oh fuck there are other people that feel whatever you're feeling from this song or that's amazing that's great but i can't help you that's not gonna happen 
It's just, it's, no. And I, I'm not, again, as I said, like, just if you're if you're not even the just message someone you idolize just for funsies and make up and just see if they start giving you advice because if they do get block them they're insanely toxic they're dangerous they're fucking dangerous get rid of those people like so they're not they're not good people that uh, this is not because i've seen it in real life no names need to be mentioned at all so just like it's just it's insane like am i going what the fuck is being said right now no sorry this is dangerous really and you're you're playing with people's lives and mental well-being and um, no nah, i don't do that sorry it's super fucking dangerous so nada no i i agree and a lot of people right now are just starting to come to grips with what may be going on in their head so they have a lot of questions a lot of confusion and the wrong word can send them down a tunnel that they may never be able to crawl out of yeah you know, also, that's I dangerous mean, I'm not. You know, I know I'm ranting now here, but like the thing is, a, a, a lot of these people are faking as well. Like they're not, they're not. The they don't care. They're not. They're, they're not. They're just. They're. It's a paycheck. Like you know, they're not. They're not sad. They're not anything. They're fucking. They're just uh, fucking. Um, there's a word. God, it's gone in my head. They're, well, they're they're just egomaniacs. They're just. They're they're in love with their own voices and. They don't have any traumas. They're just they're using it as a tool to get to people, and it's it's sick because it, the thing is the other thing about mental health as well is the other side of it, the sad side of it is you can use it as a way to to trap people and be like, oh, I'm fucking sad too. Oh, I relate to everything you're saying. Follow me on this fucking page. And I'm like, get the fuck, dude. No, you're not. what? That's that's you're 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 a uh, you're a predator now. Like you know you're fucking. That's disgusting. Like, eat, you should eat a bullet by all means. Like, so just you are useless to this planet. You are no good to people. Like, so just that's it's so dangerous. I'm very uh, adamant about this stuff. It's not. It's not. This is not a game. Like, so this is not a fucking game. It's very serious. It's not. Again, if you're online looking to just, I'll leave it at this. If you're online looking to influencers and dumb fucking people for advice, like, sir, so you're you're completely gone down the wrong track like so reverse the noise that the truck makes beep 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 get out of there like just fucking no no that just hang up block delete get the fuck out of there like seek professional help like so ask people to help you seek professional help if you're not strong enough but you're not going to find it on instagram i'm a fucking influencer that's stupid so no not at all i anyway one thing i do have to say that i do like about you know some of the jobs that are here in america is there are some jobs out there that do offer you know like free counseling sessions and things like that and and they offer you services to help with your mental health mm -hmm. i used to work at a restaurant and i went through i was going through a nasty divorce and i was like hey man i need to take time off like because i worked with with my wife at that time i was like dude i i can't i can't be here with this person like this is destroying me I need time off and they're like yeah here's here's two weeks here's all these numbers of these people you can contact awesome. you know we'll pay for all of your all of your therapy sessions whatnot just keep us updated if you're still not good in the two weeks just have your have your therapist contact us you know and we'll take steps from there to help you out yada 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 like stuff like that and that was in a restaurant which is kind of unheard of because most yeah. restaurants don't do that and you know i was really grateful for that so for that i can definitely say i do like what america is doing with that taking mental health and making it a priority for people because there are a lot of people right now who are very confused and they need guidance and i'm not saying they have to go you know seek guidance but like in their i i have no qualms about this i have a son who is transgender yeah and you know he is transitioning from male to female and right now i he allows me to still call him he and eventually i will start calling him my daughter and you know for the longest time i'm just gonna start calling her she 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 was very confused she she had a lot of you know mental health issues and she still does she she still has a lot of confusion but my wife and i are there to support her in all that she does and the rest of her family 
unfortunately isn't that way um because this is where religion pops into it and i don't usually speak on it but this affects my daughter so it it affects her and they don't really agree with what she's doing well i do but it's taken its toll on her mental health and her mental state and i'm really glad that america is starting to take that you know seriously because think how many how many young people we've lost because they feel misunderstood or they feel trapped in in something that they felt they couldn't oh kitty cat they felt they couldn't discuss with people for shame of being made fun of or for fear of being made fun of and things like that. So your points are very, very valid. And I just, I don't think other countries are, would be as accepting. And I still think there are a lot of people out there who should open their minds a bit more and try to be more accepting of the individual because it's really what's up here and in your heart that really fucking counts you know so that that's kind of my stance on it i'm really really glad that that this nation is becoming more progressive and that with mental health and taking it a lot more seriously because think about it 30 years ago what do you think would have fucking happened yeah. you know? lynched burned at the stake i don't know no exactly that's what i'm saying it it was what 30 years ago there was a gay kid who was beaten to death in i want to say it was texas or something well that's gay that's still happening i know it's still happening which is depressing (laughs) it's sad it's it's sad but now it's a lot more attention is being brought to it which i am very pleased about my again talking to any people at all about mental health there is always room for improvement. So whether you think you have your shit together or not, uh, I I I always enjoyed talk therapy. I I just like talking about some. I like talking to someone about uh, in a non biased setting where they're able to like criticize and constructively criticize things and stuff. Um, I think everyone should at w- one stage in their life just try it and just go to some because i we do live in our echo chambers and we do live in our like <laughs> we do live in uh around people that agree with us a lot like some like sitting in a room with someone that is there to like guide you and give you non-biased opinions on what you're saying and stuff is very important because most people don't have it um i don't have any experience with having a child as i explained earlier i especially mm-hmm. don't have so that having a child one terrifies me having a child that is going through what is your child is going through in this day and age because it's all so brand new i mean i don't know how i would handle i have no idea i i don't have any frame of reference in my mind even i i, I don't actually have any, any even an emotion to express like so but hopefully in the next few years there'll be more tools and more things available for all of us to either learn about it or accept it or figure it out more or like that's that's all it is important like we're going i think we are going in the right direction i think people get angry about things that like it's not there fast enough i'm like relax everything takes time like so and it doesn't happen overnight and it's it, it look unfortunately like people are going to be like there are going to be casualties along the way as well like because everyone has to figure this out themselves like so on, especially with like my my neighbor's a trans woman as well like i i've no i just i'll say to you what i said to her when she said i've i've no issue about the hurt thing now because i just it's been so long when uh when he told me i just looked up and went uh is it okay if i don't give a fuck and they just burst out laughing and i was like going oh, cool because I just don't fucking care. I just, it just doesn't affect my life. I don't feel how this, so that's kind of how I feel about most things. It doesn't affect me in any way, shape or form. So therefore I can't have an opinion on someone else's life or how they live it. So it's just, it's, um, and that's kind of how I feel about every, like you don't, you don't get to decide anything about me and I don't get to decide anything about you. And if you think you do, uh, you can fuck off. So, uh, <laughs> agreed. Uh, I, 
I 100% agree. I think that's a problem that's going on uh, a lot now, too, is everyone is trying to be involved in everyone else's fucking business. Yeah, but that's... They just... get offended too easily. People get offended too fucking easily yeah, over absolutely a, nothing. It's, it's human nature, though, as well. Like, and I, I just don't tend to... I don't tend to... I'll hold, I'll hold my, my baby like a baby now. I'll, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just don't... I have no interest in playing a part of it. That's all. Like, so I just don't, it's not, I say, I don't care a lot. It's not that I don't care. It's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't affect it, you. It doesn't affect me. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's like the two gay guys down the hall from me, like this two uh, elderly gay couple. And I, I don't fucking care. Like they're nice to me. I, that's my only requirement is you're nice to me. That's it. Like if you're not nice to me then you're just a cunty gay couple. Like, down the hall. <laughs> like, you know, just, well, you don't have to mention that they're gay. I'm like, oh, but they are. So who cares? Like, they're the cunty white gay couple that live down the hall. But they're not cunty. They're lovely. Like, so uh, they're really nice. And they all, they're just, they're lovely. Like, so but that's, again, why I love L.A. It goes back to full circle. Maybe we can yeah. finish in a full circle. Why I love L.A. <laughs> I'm surrounded yeah. by such a massive mix of an eclectic blend of human beings. And it, it gives me an opportunity to learn so much about them and, I'm happy to learn a lot about them as long as they're fucking nice people and they're just fucking and honestly that's the main thing i miss about touring because i haven't toured in... since before the pandemic it just, it, the best part was just sitting around talking to people afterwards and talking to them and listening to them and it was fun like it was just i liked i just like meeting people it's cool like, so i just like meeting people that i would have never got the opportunity to meet me personally i i just like meeting people that, that are just have funny accents or like <laughs> ethnicity or like you're from a weird country or something like whoa what the fuck but hilariously enough i'm always the guy with the funny accents and the the fucking like oh man you're from fucking ireland you sure do got a funny accent i was like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the irish guy in la yeah I, yeah that, that's that's the title of the book one day the irish guy in LA, <laughs> so, featuring steve yeah. pat so Oh, dude, your cat is chonk, and I love it. Yeah, he's a big boy. 20 pounds right here. <laughs> mine, yeah, mine is a long-haired 20-pound cat whose name is aptly Duchess because she acts like a duchess. I love her, but, oh, man, if you don't give her her soft food, you know about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You might want to check your shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of her, but, uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good point to leave it on a happy note as well. Like, yes, so. yes. Thank you so much for all of your time, Jimmy. Um, yeah. Again, everybody, this was Jimmy Trigger of A Trigger Within. Thank you, dude. Seriously. Thanks, it was you. a pleasure meeting you. Say goodbye. Uh, and I look forward to doing this again sometime, man. Yeah, maybe dude. uh, maybe after your single drops and, you know, maybe if you tour again, I'll yeah, try yeah. and catch you on it. Yeah, uh, I said maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would like to. That shit costs money. So. <laughs> oh man, don't even get me started on on how much touring is these days. Ooh, yeah, fuck yeah. that. that was well, pleasure again, you as well, so. pleasure. Thank you, Jimmy. You have a yeah. wonderful night. See you later. See ya. Bye, Stevie. <laughs> awesome. And. Bye. And.